play, but then I score. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you about that one over there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just feel like it was a little bit too early. I think they gave up too much quicker the game. I think. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think you can score three goals in eight minutes in hockey. You know what I mean? You can go score. You can score three goals in two minutes, honestly. But my point to you yeah. is, I think you should a little bit like now. It's something you know, many, many, many people can talk about this, and they, you know what I mean. Fifty can say yes. Fifty can say no. Uh, if Flowers score two goals, me and you will look look stupid right now because we talk. Yeah. About, well, you know? I, listen. I think um, we saw the Leafs score three goals with the goalie pulled. That's a rarity. Yeah. I, my, more often than not, I think if you look at the stats, you're getting scored on. Yeah, but again, I think it was a bit early. I think I have no advantage. Yeah, that's, that at that. But moment. he was—he was. I guess he felt desperate, but I don't think desperation works. But I, I don't think that's why they lost. I mean, in the end, the Islanders are very well prepared, and this is the risk with Philadelphia because they look like they're just playing shinny sometimes. Yeah, but again, you know, if we go the stats, twenty-nine, twenty-nine shot, fifty-two, forty-eight, equal almost there. Zero one zero one penalty four four hit thirty four twenty nine almost the same. It's only Looks. the block. They have twenty two shot block versus ten for uh, Islanders again. Hmm. You know what I mean? So Islanders. Yeah. So you know. I mean, what, one thing about block shots that we don't talk about is um, the fact that it creates broken plays for for you, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's one thing to prevent the shot getting through, but when someone shoots and you break the play, they're, they're flat, right? And you get to go in transition a lot of times. I guess it depends. But I think, I think that that's an effective technique for that reason, right? And Islanders seem to be a counterpunch team. Are the Islanders really – they're scoring five on five. Yeah. And again – So, you know, that's tough, man. They're doing really well. I think another good thing about power uh, about Islanders really balanced. Everybody play at least ten minutes. It's four lines, yeah. eleven minutes at least. Um, one thing they did um, for some reason, he took um, Derek Brassar was not in the lineup yesterday. Hmm. Uh, Maybe he's hurt. Yeah, I don't know. It's something we have to look about that one over there. On the flip side, for uh, Flowers, did not dress Robert Hag. Uh, defenseman, and uh, they took James Vance, uh, Rims, um, Rimsdick out again. GVR was out again. GVR is going to get killed against the Islanders. I don't. He can't play that guy five on five, man. He's terrible. Yeah. I don't know what the trade was with Toronto about that one. Well, they signed him as a free agent, so he was like, you know, he's he can score, but if you look at his stats, typically he's like a twenty-seven goal scorer in sixteen minutes a game. Yeah. And there's a reason he's playing 16 because he's good on very select situations. Like you can't play him more than a third line role five on five. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? Like you have to give credit. Uh, you talk about structure. You talk about balance, about lenders. Look about this. If you look at the stat, they have no one have two points yesterday. Wow. They only have one point. So you, you, you know what I mean? You talk about, you, you think about, look who you score, you know? Grain, uh, Andy Green score, you know, the yep. uh, Lee score four, Tajou score fifth. So they have a really balanced, they play with the four lines. Trots is really structure and details. Preparation is there. He's a Bill Billy check, I believe, of the NHL. He prepared very well his team. And, um, you know, again, we, we mentioned this yesterday morning. Um, they need more. You, need, you know what I mean? Like a clinic. Connect, connect me and uh, and Ace Couturier and uh, Giroud. They don't. They not score. They, they cannot score. They need so. They need those guys. If they want to win. They they don't get any production from them. This is not going to go nowhere. Yeah, they're um, they they're gonna. You know, it's weird because I think when you have a team that plays the style the Flyers do. They're relying upon energy and they're relying upon the talent they've got on the ice. And that, that's good in a sense during the season because they are a deep team and they trust the coach and the coach trusts them. However, when you're in the playoffs, like, you know, that structure and that tight game comes down, takes away a lot of the opportunities you would have in that style. And you can see another level of that where this staying on the right side of the puck, outnumbering them on the puck, 
picking up the late man in transition very, very early. The Islanders create opportunity. And we talked about it yesterday. The four check for the Islanders put a lot of pressure on that D and they got hemmed down a lot. But that's why, but, you know, that was the reason uh, we said yesterday about the defense. Yep. You know I, mean? I agree. And the defensemen are good, but I mean, they have to have a way to deal with that pressure. So we'll see what happened there. Uh, let's go move on to the game number two. This game number second, the game well, second game of the nice. night. Uh, we're going to see if you don't mind. We're going to see the the goals of the night. Yeah, this one's killing me. Then we're going to move back after that, talking more about this one over there. Uh, let me. Yeah, I'm curious to see the later goals. <clears throat> yeah. So early on in this, like Colorado was up two zip, and it looked like things were going well. And that's so that's the ten point ten game streak, right? Yeah, but did you see the pass? Oh yeah, it was just like a little up high though. Does he chip it over? Yeah, it's a south it's a south guy pass. Yeah, just chipped it over the stick. Right? Okay. But you have to go there. It's a one timer. So the yeah. timing is it, it, he's just an ex he's the best of the best, I can tell you that. Oh he's man, because I think Pavelski so, and Perry are at that moment we are listen to this, we have at the half of the game. Colorado is dominate. Dallas, Dallas tried to come back the other now. Giro just got got the penalty for slashing, but 20 second letter, uh, we don't see that. But uh, young Cole did a, a bad crash checking in the back of Pavelski. Have no reason to do it. Uh. Yeah, and, and they pick up now the 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 um, they pick now a five versus three. Check what happened after that. And that's why you talk about momentum and momentum that's happened there. So they scored two goals on this on the side right back to back goal right there Jeez. on the young cold penalty. Yeah. And this after that that you can see the shift of the of the momentum of the game right there. Uh, we talk about the middle of the game right there. They was probably made four goals in ten minutes. Can you believe it? Can you believe this? The empty net right there. I, uh, you on on your mute. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's brutal. I it was like so painful to watch. But it, you know, if you're a Dallas fan, maybe everybody knew how good this team was. I think you're seeing two guys that think they have one last shot at a cup, and they're leading this team because you know Sagan and Ben were in Never Never Land. But you've seen Pavelski consistently step up and Corey Perry's like right in the mix. And it's like both of their teams, like their California teams dropped after they left. <laughs> but again, check about this yesterday. All right. Avalanche, 40 shot versus 27. Wow. And that's Kudo, that's Kudobin again. So now, like that's the backup. Now Dallas have 21 shot block. Jesus. So it's now we just gave about 61 shot 61 versus 31. Shot. So double, double, but the, check what happening there. Now on power play, Dallas scored two goals and three attempts. Avalanche, two goals and eight attempts. Damn. That's not normal. Avalanche should score more goal and power play, but check about that one over there. Are you ready for the hits? Oh, that's like, that's like 30%, isn't it? Yeah. Are you ready for the hits? Yeah. 60 hits for Dallas versus 29. What? 60 hits. Holy crap, that's got to be a record. That's that is usually 20, 30, you know what I mean? Like 30. Yeah, we, we saw a game the other day was 40, and I was like, wow, that's high. Like, yeah, 60. So, um, you know, um, Colorado have to look at themselves. The, the, it's, uh, you know, it's young Cole. It's the momentum right there. Chen. It's the same thing happened with, you remember, when Dallas. Everything started when Dallas scored three goals and um, back to back to back after Calgary 3 0 after six minutes, and then Lucic got the penalty and the momentum shift. Same thing yep. happened yesterday. Um, you know, McKinnon and, Ret and Retanen and Lester Gag have all the points with uh, Makar, but still, McKinnon, seven of, this, of the playoff was 1 0. Then Retanen, Retanen scored a fourth of, this, of the playoff. 2-0, and then bang, bang, bang. They have Pavelski, they have a Fax, uh, Faxa, then you yep. have Retulov, fifth, and then uh, Lendell is first. 
It was four zero uh, four two, and then an uh, empty net. <laughs> Jimmy Ole Oleksiak score like uh, from the two hundred wow. feet. Yeah, yeah, he he was behind the goal line. He shoot the puck and puck rolled right slowly in the net. But um, you know, what's Oleksiak's contract status? For what? Jamie Oleksiak. What's his contract status? I don't know about. He's there for a couple of years. Because he's bounced around a little bit, right? You know, the good thing about Dallas yesterday, they have only Red to Love with two points. The rest have only one point everywhere. So it was really balanced about that. One thing he did well yesterday, uh, Barnes, he played, everybody played 10 minutes and more. That's what did not happen the, the first game. Secondly, for surprise me, Corey Perry played only 10 minutes yesterday. Wow. So, uh, he but he got in on that goal, like he got in there. And... Yeah, so he bring a little bit more day over there. Uh, and then... So, uh, but, yeah, Alexiak's making 2.1, and he's got one year left on that contract. Yeah. And he's 20, yeah. 27, so he'll be 28, because he's a 92, so he'll be 28 this year, he'll be 29. They use him a lot. You know, he played 23 mm. with SKN and... Uh, and uh, you know who he played, did not play, well, he played 19, uh, one play not play a lot. Yesterday was Clem Bird, play only 17 minutes. Um, they play a 5D, huh. honestly, over there. They have a Fedan, a Fedan, maybe the last name is not very well known, I've said this, but... Uh, oh, Taylor Fedan. Yeah, he got a penalty, and then he was done after that. Oh, my God, he got a penalty at some point. He was like, like uh, see a good position about that one over there. Again, Avalanche was running by McKinnon, two other points yesterday, and uh, Rettenen have two points over there. Um, I don't know, buddy. 2-0 now. Um, yeah, I don't know it's looking rough. I, mean, block, I think Colorado, obviously Colorado's got to win the next game. If they don't, this is done. Now, the bad news about them, uh, it's, the, it's over now. Uh, Eric Johnson is out differently, and also the goalie, uh, Philip. Grubauer. Yeah. So this is over. Um, you know, McKinnon is already at 18 point. He's four point from the second score uh, point in the league right now. Um, so um, he's really on the, have a great, kind of, you know, good stuff there. You know, Joe Pavelski, seven goal already with like McKinnon. Amaze me, you know? That's what I'm saying. Like Pavelski, you know, first of all, San Jose has got to do a deep look at what they did, which was obviously a mistake. You know, like I don't, I never would have given Eric Carlson that much cash. First of all, second of all, to give up your captain who only wanted 6.2 and scored 34 goals for you. Now he didn't have a great regular season with Dallas, but we're seeing his value. I mean, that guy's a really good leader. His game's not based on speed. It's based on smarts. And that's, so he's not going to get worse. You know what you did is send Marlowe, they send uh, why? Kowalski. I don't know why they did not send Thornton. Mar Marlo was the guy that was the captain. They took it away from him. Yep. You know, Marlo is what he so is. Thornton He's a gentleman guy. That. Thornton too, right? Yep. Yeah, and Thornton, I don't know, like, they're, they're old. And Pavelski is definitely younger. And his game is not, like, you know, Marlo scores the 27 of the most useless goals a year. Yeah. It's like he's not – and he's dropped off, obviously. Like, But I never thought he was – like when you saw him play for Team Canada, again, with, with the other players that were supposed to be stars, you'd be like, this guy, he's not there. He doesn't have it. So I don't, he's obviously had a good career, but I don't, I don't see why you would dump a 34-goal guy for two guys that aren't going to do it. I mean, I know they're cheaper, but they gave that money to Carlson, and Carlson's high risk, high reward mostly, and he's getting old. He's a yeah. little body that gets, takes a lot of punishment, plays a lot of time. But again, oh, well. you know, um, if we just back at that game, um, you know, something had to change with Colorado, and um, and Dallas is on the, have the momentum right now. They start to believe themselves very well. They they are not worried. They're down by two by three goals. <laughs> I believe them. You know what I mean? So they. Are, Do you it, believe in Dallas? It surprised me, honestly. You know what I mean? Like, I was not expect Dallas to be 2-0 after two games. I was said, oh, my God, never going to happen. But that's that's the playoff. That's the series. Sometimes it's, a, it's a, an injury. Sometimes it's, a, you know, shifting a momentum during the game. Like, 
young call, but I think they're going to suffer a lot of the loss of uh, the goalie and Eric Johnson, to be honest with you. But that's well, we not- talked about that yesterday too, right? Like that's a that's an unknown. Like you know, your number one D probably gone, and then definitely your number one goalie. I mean, we're seeing a difference between those goalies now. Yeah, and because now you talk about confidence, everything like that, so you can see the players maybe play differently. And uh, it's a big trend to have Eric Johnson with Makar and Jira and Zatarov compared. Now we have to bring Kevin Can- uh, Connington in the lineup, maybe on that. Um, oh, Kevin Connaughton? Yeah, so they did dress him. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. He's he's a veteran guy, and he's got a no, little but, bit of... You know what I mean? Like, you cannot compare it's him not like the same. Johnson. <laughs> I mean, I mean Makar is going to get more time, but I think Johnson, <clears throat> as you know, is a horse, right? Like he's always had injury problems. I think you know, like at inopportune moments. But he's six four. He can skate. He's decent offensively. That's a big loss. He's a oh, big yeah. man. He plays big. Yeah. He might be six five. He's a big man. So let's go move on for today. Today we are back with two other games and start at seven p.m. Remember everybody now. Uh, the game starts at 7 p.m. now, not 8 p.m. anymore, and 9.45. Both games are on the NBCSN, CBS in Canada. And for the French Canadians like me, they are on the TV, TVASN. <laughs> and, of course, you have TSN also if you want to go there, if you want to watch him too over there. But tonight, Boston Bruins versus Lightning Tampa, 1-0. Boston Browns, the first game I would say to you is all about uh, Brent Martian. He was the, the dominate the game all the way. Lightning show up at the last five minutes of the game with 3 1, 3 2. Well, they score at eight minutes with uh, Edmund, but after that, they score at 1 14, remaining the game for 3 2. And they are all over Boston. And Alec shut down the, the door and they came up with a 1 0 Boston and see what happened tonight. I don't know what you. Your expectation for the game tonight? What do you I'm, thinking? Or I, I, I just I never trust Tampa, and they've shown why. I mean, they had an opportunity here. Rask is gone now. That seems to have helped Boston having Rask go. Boston's a really good team. They get passionate back. That gives them a really you know a fifty goal scorer. I don't know. I'm not sure what to say. Like Tampa's always got this element where they're, you know, just you can't predict what they're going to do they have talent and depth but do they have the consistency i'm not sure yeah I, 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 you know again like like i said before with with dallas i believe dallas is going to win if they have eskinen and Clembert and uh, linden uh carry on the, the team as the, the the three trio right uh mm-hmm. Boston for me it's more about martian past uh, past neck and uh, bergeron and one they produce at least five, six points per game, like all three together, the chance of Boston win are there. After that, yeah. they don't have anything really like, you know, uh, you can talk about Krejci and uh, De Bruyne. Krejci is really, I think Krejci, though, has had a great playoff. And he shows game in and game out why. I agree like, with you. A, I agree with you. One, one one. There. And I'm going to add Charlie Coy. Um, where Charlie think, Quill and DeBrusque is, you know, he'll chip in a little bit. Yeah, now DeBrusque, he played injury right now. He is he had, out? Yeah, so he played only 10 minutes last game. I don't know the status of him today, but um, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think the the four fifth, you know, forward after them, it's a really like David um, Kretschik and, um, and Charlie Coyle. For that part, you know, you know already what's going on with uh, McEnvoy, McEnvoy in the back. McAvoy, yeah. Yeah, and then you know already with Tony Crook, and then you know Shara, you know, uh, is it Carva? No, Carvo. Brandon Carlo, yeah. He played yeah. in our league in the WHL. Oh, I, wow. I think I was going to say the same thing, which is like their defense. And then there's that Matt, starts with a G. Is it Grizzlewicky or something like that? I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, Chris. Wesley, whatever his last name. Have you have you watched him play? He's actually very good. Yeah, but it's really a good, you know, it's a little bit, I call it, he's not exactly like him, but I would say he's almost like Tony Crook. To play. Uh, he's a, he's like, I didn't realize that because he's like a s- less offensively productive Tony Krug. Tory, Tory Krug is, very, you know, obviously a high-end guy, but you're right. Like, he's similar build. Yep. He skates very well. He sees yep. the ice. He makes great outlet passes. He's a I very good player. about that one over there. 
And, you know, for Tampa to win, I think they need more from Kucherov and uh, Brenton Point. But I think right now, uh, overall, Serie Sir Lee, they had a great playoff so far. Killer is fine, but I think they need more from the big gun tonight if they want to compete. But again, that game or that series is going to be one line versus to under the line. That's pretty much what I'm thinking about that one over there. Um, but interesting to see that. And we'll see if John uh, Coach Cooper is going to bring the team back. Um, and uh, we have to give credit to Alak. You have a very good, solid game, the first game. But Not bad, right? You can carry on that team. And, you know, he, he's been there. He's a, he's a veteran. He's, you know what I mean? Like, he's not big. Sure. But he, he does his job since he's with the Boston Browns. So, uh, we'll see what's going on tonight. But game number two, uh, you know, um, we'll see now what Canucks are really real. Or they can can play against Golden Knights, or Golden Knights going to shut down them in four games, but possible too. Uh, there was terrible Canucks Vancouver, or is it Vegas was unbelievable? We see going how they going to respond tonight, Vancouver. I don't think so. They play very well defensively, where they was poorly. Maybe one of the worst game of the year with Benev in the back with. Oh, why? And they have a bad minus three. You, you see, ten. you can see why though, right? Like the reason is is. Vegas is in your face constantly. Like they use their speed to take away time and space before you have the puck. It's pretty impressive. They they do a really good I, job I, of creating pressure constantly. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that one over there. I think they it's a thing. more than I realized, probably, but but you're on the West Coast, right? So many Sorry. people from the East Coast and everything, we don't see Vegas a lot. We understand their their yeah, their, their lineup, everything like that, and we don't give them enough credit. I think the D is sure. what we expect. I think Sean Deodor, Schmidt, and um, Alex Martinez over there now, uh, they bring a lot. And now Lerner is playing like crazy right now. He's 8-9-1 in the, in the net. And they have the big guns in the front where Tachiriti and, and Matt, Mark Stone uh, do very well over there. And uh, William Carlson is, you know, and, you know, I can't believe me, Jonathan uh, Marcheso. Wow. This is this kid is amazing. I believe he's so talented. You know, can't believe it. I mean, like, is he in ninety four? He's he's like twenty seven or twenty eight now, but he's so, he's got so much ability. Like, if you're Florida, you're kicking yourself for exposing that guy. They could have exposed Nick Bukestad. <laughs> you know, I shake my head right now because I'm thinking, think about this. What you know, we I live you know I live in Florida, so the Panthers. I'm really close. I work for the yeah. organization too, but. I yeah. shake my head right now because I'm thinking, wait a minute, we have Jonathan Marchenso and the team, right? And Riley Smith. That, that's my, my I, was, <laughs> I was going there. We have Riley Smith. What the heck did, why Dale Talon or um, Tom Rowe or Tommy Rowe, whatever is his first name, I'm not sure. right? Um, they just destroyed that, not destroyed, but they gave two, Imagine them with them with the lineup they have right now. How much this team will be so much better? Um, that's you know they, they 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 produce a lot. Riley Smith, we don't give him a lot of credit. He's a he kids can score twenty goals, but he does a lot of good. Gate. You know he can he's skate really well, gate. produce a lot. Those players. Um, so um, you know, uh, honestly, I I go with Vegas tonight. I will go with Tampa and Vegas tonight for my bold prediction. <laughs> Uh, for the for the tonight for me, um, I don't know what you have in your in your head for tonight. I, I agree with you on Vegas. I think they look really good. I can't see that changing. That other series is really it was you know it was a three two game right so it, it wasn't like Tampa was blown out or anything. Um, I I think Tampa will win it, but I don't know, man. It's a coin toss over there. Okay. Let's move on to the news and. Um, this is a new um, a new segment of the program, and maybe you did not know very well, but I'm going to bring you news, and I want you to get your comments. Does it make sense to you? Yep, I get it. All right. So, um, NHL at 4,644 4, tests for testing so far, and how many do you think yep. they have? How many do you think they got positive? Zero. You got it. Zero and almost 5,000 tests so far. Um, 
that's pretty amazing for that part. Um, from John Shannon, you, you know John Shannon? Shannon yep. is one of the- Maple Leaf you know, TV. Uh, yeah, it's an of fame. They have right now a discussion between the NHL and the NHLPA uh, because honestly, they don't know what's going to happen with 2020 and 2021 season. So the proposal of the, the situation right now is to find four bubble city. Wow, so, really? Yeah. So four places are probably going to be only in Canada or maybe in US. What? And that's crazy. So th this would start when? December? Uh, they don't talk about they, you know, some point it says December, some they said in January. Uh, they talk about uh, rotate all the team through the city and eight game increment. So we talk about 32 to maybe oh my God. 32 That's games weird. for the season. So no fans, obviously, is what they're anticipating. Not really. Or they may be open the door, some fun. But again, I just, you know, just give you the news about that one over there. Um, Red Wings resign uh, Robbie Fabry. Good uh, pick. Two-year contract extension for 2.95. You know, we don't talk about this. We forgot him. But he was one of, the, <laughs> of, the, of the Blues last season, right? Yeah, so he, so Robbie, I've known, um, so a guy that I know for a long time is Dominic Amodio. Yep. And Dominic coached um, the Mississauga Rebels. And he yep. coached Fabry from a young age. It was always Fabry versus McDavid, although McDavid's technically a year older. They were at the same playing age group, which is the 96s, I think. Yep. Um, and because McDavid's a 97 and he always played a year up with the Marlies. Marlies had McDavid, Josh Hosang, um, Sam Bennett. <laughs> like cra crazy. So if you want to see one of the best ever GTHL finals, go on YouTube and look for Robbie Fabry versus Connor McDavid. And you'll see those kids when they were 15 playing for the GTHL championship. And then again in the OHL Cup. Robbie, we've known for a long time. The kid is like, he's got guts. He's got speed. He had some bad injuries when he hit the NHL. And I love the move by Iserman to identify and bring him in. And he responded like he's a character kid with a lot of ability. He's not a big guy. He's like 5'10", maybe. But he can play. And I think he's a good fit in Detroit. Now they just need a second-line centerman. Because well, if you think... look at it, the, he's a great pick for three million. I mean, at, I agree with you. Great trade. They trade him for um, um, the, De La Rose. De La Rose. I, I'm looking for it. Jacob De La Rose. Is it Jacob, the first name, the Swedish. Yeah. He was from draft from Montreal. So uh, went from yep. Montreal over there. Move on to the Nashville Predator. They uh, they loan a forward Eli Dolvenen to the wow. one team to KHL. So he's going to go there. Wow. Calgary Flames, check about that one over there. Matthew Kachuk got a concussion at the game number two. Wow, that's not good. Defenseman Rasman Anderson play with a broken foot. What? <laughs> I mean, as you know, there's not much you can do with your foot. There's a lot of bones in it, so I wonder what he broke. <laughs> Sam Bennett I... play with a torn tricep. What the hell? How the hell? And he had a great series. Maybe he should tear it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Now we're going to go with Carolina Hurricanes. Um, um, you know uh, Br the defenseman is it? I'm sorry about his last name. Br Pesci? Pesci, yeah. So he's skating now. He was not expect to play until the third round. If Carolina was going to get there, if not that, he could not be back on the first or second round. Uh, yeah. Good news, great news for Andre uh, Shevchenkov. He got yeah. oh, it's a high ankle sprain. So th those can take a long time, but thank God it's not a knee, right? He's going, like, he said he's going to be ready for next season, and I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. It's his knee, it was really important. We already know the situation in Colorado. Let's move on with Dallas. Ben Bishop and uh, defenseman Stephen John Raymond. Stephen are, Johns? Yeah, they are out for the outfit to play until round number two. Number third, three. Uh, I I, uh, I got to coach Stephen Johns when he was thirteen. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we were in a tournament, and I coached with a, a team that had a bunch of guys, some from 
there's a defenseman from Montreal and he was a 92 and um, you could see he was a horse then like he was just a you know he was just 5'11 six foot at that point I think he's like 6'3 six, 6'4 six, now but really high strung could really go offensively when you wanted he was a good player he's had and, some problems uh, though with concussion and then um, no discussion yet it's a uh, no uh, not no report by Vancouver about um, Myers, and I think that's a good, that's a big inj it's a big loss for Vancouver. Oh, I agree. Not have Tyler Myers over there, and same situation with and we didn't see him all year long and uh, all see, uh, all the playoff uh, Toffoli. He's he's banged up. So Toffoli cannot play so far. He did not play any games so far. Let's move on with uh, Chicago. Discussion with Graf Crawford is going to have an ID in the next couple of weeks. Uh, what the offer Bowman would like to have Crawford back, but they will see at not at any uh, at a specific price, not like high level. So we'll see what happened with Crawford over there. Um, Wait, wouldn't you think he would still get four or five mil? I don't think so he can get more. I'll be honest with you, but uh, we'll see what happened over there. Um, Brett, C I wonder what he wants. He broke, um, you know, it's another one where you said to me, remember you said to me, you maybe cut like um, release him or, you know, what's the contract situation? Like someone you uh, not put on the way, yeah. um, go apart, you know what I mean? Um, he has a coming off of the shoulder and two hip surgery. So that give you an idea what's going on over there. A, a lot of miles. Uh, Montreal is a situation where uh, they have to think about something because Gallagher and Tadar is going to be UFA and next after next season, so 21-22. So they have to figure out with um, you know uh, with uh, with Max Domi. Um, do you know the rumor between Calgary and Montreal? No, what is it? Um, Ryan Poland, Max Domi. And maybe a second round pick for Johnny Goudreau. That, why the fuck would that ever happen? They're not trading Goudreau. So, um, but that's a Who's it, who made that rumor? <laughs> uh, Goudreau is on is on the um, he was on the on the maybe you have a get a trade over there. Uh, he wants to stay in Calgary, but it was rumor from uh, TSN yesterday about that one over there. Not only with Montreal, but with other players. Um, so that's a rumor between Montreal and Calgary, honestly. Um, so let, let, let's break this down. You're saying Max Domi? Yeah. A, a draft pick and who? Ryan Poling. Ryan Poling, yeah. There's, there's no way anyone in their right mind trades Johnny Goudreau for that. I mean, Ryan Poling had, had four goals in one game. He'll never do that again. If you know that kid, he's probably a third line. Maybe if you're lucky, second line center. Yeah. You're talking about one of the best players in the game in Goudreau. Well, you know, you, you don't have a good season for the last two seasons. What? Goudreau? Yeah. He's like playing a game. What? Yeah, he's like playing a game, isn't he? You have only you have a, I mean what's a what's a bad what's a bad season? Yeah. <laughs> 50, oh, yeah, 58 points last season. Uh, no, when I, I'm sorry, I was said yeah, he had 99 points last year. Yeah, the, the, what I'm talking about is like he him, had 99 points last year. And just, he dropped good. his goal scoring. He had like 36 yards prior. Now he have only 18. Look at all of Calgary. No, but I'm talking about you know what I mean like he on. on on the on the on the level he played you know he scored remember he scored 24 30 18 24 36 oh i get it but that's one year and drops to 18. <laughs> Let, let's but, think about what happened but in calgary regular, though, right? but he's regular look 64 78 61 84 99 and 58. if you go by that look at kachuk his numbers were down Lindholm was good, but his assists were down. The yep. guy who's really down was Monaghan. So yeah, you're going to trade Monaghan and Goudreau. It makes no sense. Like well, you know they, they had a situation with the they had a situation with the coach at the beginning. Yep. 
um, you know, they, they were only 500 at that point. And then the new guy came in and they kind of, they turned it around. I mean, I think, I think that whole team is down. I think that's similar to Toronto where, you know, they underperformed for the first part. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, we just go around the league right now. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to talk about uh, when the NHL playoff will be uh, over. We're going to go t uh, team by team. You're a scout. We're going to go through a little bit more about the uh, situation with each team on the, you know, and the club farm, the farm club, and also we're going to talk about draft. So we're going to bring a lot of things here. And then we're going to talk more about, you know, until see what happened for the draft. And, um, and, yeah. um, and the NHL playoff for the next couple of weeks, uh, they expect now the rushing. The I'm excited. I don't know if you heard about this. Um, that's a, maybe another news. Um, is it John Daly? Is it John Daly? Was it Daly? Daly? I don't know his first name. From NHL, the talk Bill Daly pushing the pushing the schedule quicker. Do you know so what, a shorter season? Yeah. Do, do Do you know what it was the for the first time? If Montreal and Flyers play game number seven, if they was play Sunday the game, the round of, the second round it was starting Saturday. What? Thank and, God. Yeah, it was, yeah. So it was like the that's what I'm talking about. They tried to push because the player is complaining about, um, you know. Uh, by the way, they have a North School in Montreal. It's tough. Uh, Rick <laughs> Bonus, Rick Bonus said yesterday he was they are miserable to live over there because they feel like they are in the jail. They cannot do anything. Yeah, hockey jail. Yeah. So um, someone told someone said. Yeah, it's it's tough. You know what I mean? So um, we'll see. I'm ex excited for the game, the first game tonight. Honestly, but I guess I believe it will be short. But uh, I'm excited to see Tampa Bay <laughs> tonight versus Boston. And uh, I have, We're gonna like, find uh, you know, you know, I'm coaching in Florida. I have a lot of a lot of parents. I was coaching a team last season, and they are from Islanders and Flyers. So um, they fight each other like on the phone, texting, <laughs> talking trash, and everything like that. And I can understand that. Islander did not win for the last 29, 25 years. And Bos and Flowers, they were over 40, 40, uh, 45 years. They did not win, or 35 years, they did not win. Oh, for a Stanley Cup? Yeah. Yeah. You know, my cousin was with the Islanders. Oh, yeah? Was, well, so before Jimmy went to Detroit to be the general manager, he was with the Islanders. He was the chief scout, and then he was assistant GM for a year. So we had three of the four cups. Wow, that's a good year with Mr. Al Albur. So he, 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 he is a chief scout and he got the draft. Mike Bossy, Brian Trache, Dennis Potvin, Clark Gillies. Those, it was like he had a crazy run there. And Ed Westfall, I told you earlier, and I was just kidding. And you know what's Smith funny? Is I, it's Ed Westfall. You know what's funny is how he said that he was from the Flyers? He's still there. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh, um, you know what? He was with the Niagara Falls Flyers. <laughs> really? In the OHA. That's why, because that team was a pretty famous OHA team. Yeah. Before it was the OHL, right? That's why I, I always think of him as a flyer, but it's not NHL Flyers. Because he played Boston and the Islanders, right? Yep. Long so, time. Um, you know, we um, just to, uh, by the way, they have the um, manager of the pen. Oh, uh, I would tell you another thing. Um, Mike, uh, Mike Backock and Gerald Gallen are the front runner for coach for Washington right now. Good. You know what? Bab Babcock is the type of guy they might need, but you know, their reaction to him might be, you know, we'll see. I don't think you can be a soft coach and you can be a, a player's coach in Washington. I, if they're committed to winning, then they put a guy like that in. Why does Gerard Gallant keep losing his job? Like the Vegas move was weird to me, and then even the Florida move was weird to me. And he's always had success. Well, and, and Florida, it's all about Tom Rowe. Honestly, yeah. he went to coach, so that's why. Like that was <laughs> terrible and miserable. It was the worst move in the NHL history. Wow! All these the top best, you know, three, and then and Vegas. Um, it, it, again, it's another one where they, they expect more, um, they was expect more, and I don't think so. They give him a chance to 
because at that moment, I think when they fired him, he was on the first, second place. And then what, maybe the team lost a couple of games back to back to back, but it was three for 500 at least. And uh, I think, sh I'm sure they would be a good coach. That right now with Gerard Kellen or Pete Dobar, honestly. Um, well, that, that here's, would be a here's what bums me out. It's like Detroit is recommitting to Blash Hill. Like they need, a, if they, if Detroit would move on Gerard Gallant, that's where he came from. Like get Gerard Gallant as your coach and then build with him. Do you really believe do you Gerard Gallant will, do you believe Gallant is going to accept a team and, 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 and rebuilding or recross, you know what I mean? Like, do you believe like those big, big I, names? I, I, I think it boils down to what's the grow forward approach with Detroit. They got to get rid of some dead weight. If, if Stevie Eiserman said to him, listen, eat one year, the second year we're going to be good. They, cause they have a lot of talent coming up. Like they're, if you look at it, they're really, if they had a second line center, like like um, if they signed like a Grandland or they, if they traded for like a Yanni Gord or a Tyler Johnson, that would give them two really good lines. The young guys like Beleno, Rasmussen, they're pretty close to being ready and they're very good. So really they're like three players away from being competitive. They need a second line center. Larkin can't do it on his own. He's very inconsistent with how he plays. So if they had a second line center, they'd be much better because they got Z Z Zadina's going to be legit. He's going to be a 30, 40 goal scorer. They signed Fabry. They got Bertuzzi and Mantha, and then they got Larkin. So if you get a second line center, that team looks very different. The still, defense, they missing a, a lot of piece before they get like you know the top ten. They, top they, oh yeah, but I think that happens faster than we think. Like. If, if you had, if you pulled in a second line center and you get a goalie, if they traded for a Matt Murray, then a Gerard Gallant comes. I gave them two, three years minimum before they get that. Uh, it, that's why I say it depends on their approach. They can't be patient. Like their, their young guys are not that, like they're at the point where they got to play and they got to get rid of guys like Nielsen and Philpla and Helm and Abdicator. They got to get rid of them. It's Again, over. that's another bad, great, uh, bad contract with the Nil um... Terrible. Yeah. No, but if you look at what falls off, the daily contract's gone. Not that he was bad. Um, Eric, uh, John, Jonathan Erickson's contract's off. So that's like seven mil off the books right now. You got to buy out Nielsen and Abdicator, and you probably you knock off almost 10 million between the two of them. I know what happened with Akavailer. Like he's, he's, he's never, he's had one year where he scored 17 goals. So he never even scored 20. He's he just what from, he is. Uh, he came from a Cedar Rapids with the uh, U.S. Yeah. I, yeah I, I don't dislike him. He had no goals last year in 60 games. And he's sure? getting 4.2 or 4.5. And he's wearing a letter. But anyway, if Detroit play Montreal next year, 32 games, they're going to make the playoff. <laughs> Listen, I think it boils down to how aggressive Stevie Eiserman is. He, you know if the story he doesn't believe that. Why I said that? Well, with Montreal and Detroit. Yeah. Do you know why I said that? No. It's because Montreal lost yeah. all their game against Detroit last year. Oh yeah, yeah. In the season, got it. Season. Four, four games, four. <laughs> and that's make Montreal lower because of that part. Because you know, and Montreal has always been this way. They can play Boston, Tampa most of the time, and he cannot play with the lower team, like the bottom of the, of the, of the line, of the standing. So that's crazy about that one over there. But uh, let's move on. And then um, listen, it was a great show today. Um, fans, Hockey Nation, we're going to call it this way now. I like it. Uh, enjoyed, um, enjoyed the two game tonight. Again, we're going to, you know, Boston versus Tampa, 7 p.m. Eastern time on NBC and Vancouver to Vegas and 9.45. Expect great game tonight for late. Vancouver is going to get a little bit more um, show up tonight and uh, see what happened with that game. But uh, look forward to see you tomorrow, Mike. 11 a.m. Eastern Good. time. Zurich Leif from the end of Penalty Box podcast boot. And you guys tomorrow. Amazing, great hockey day again. Hockey night now because we don't please during the day anymore, right? Yeah, sadly. Yeah, I know. So have a great day. I will look forward to see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Have a Thanks, guys. Day. Have a good one. Bye. Bye now.